Hey, this is Bone Crusher, man. It's another story, another time. It's an origin of the greats. Just some questions with some of my friends from ATL. It's seven questions in seven seconds, man. And today, we got good friends of ours and good friends of the show. My boys, my homies, my my comrades in arms. Wicked and Nino. Ghetto Mafia, man. Decatur Great. You know what I mean? Wicked! It's going down. We're going to hang around. We're going to have some fun. Hey, it's Bone Crusher. Another day, another outstanding night, evening, morning with an origin story with my family and friends. Seven questions and seven seconds with me. Tonight, we have my good friends straight from Decatur. Get them off you. That's right. That's right. <sighs> yeah. Nino and Wicked. Building. In the building. How y'all doing today, man? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. 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 Yeah. Out- Great. Outstanding. Outstanding. Question one, gentlemen. You answer it individually. Tell the humans your origin and where it all started for you and your love for music. Me personally, correct? Not the group. Uh, if I answered that question right there, it would start for me maybe at about 14 years old, Decatur. Um, seeing some of the dance groups back in the day. Right, right. You know, uh, before because I tell people all the time, Atlanta had the dance groups before right. the rapping. Right, right. Of, of course. People don't know that. Of course. The dance groups turned into the rappers. That's right. You know, mm-hmm. so that's kind of where it started for me. Rico uh, and them used to dance before they started producing. Absolutely. Organized noise. Absolutely. You're right. Absolutely. You're right. Yeah, so seeing them at Columbia Talent Shows. Yep. And, and you know some of the uh, Washington, uh, some of the talent there back in the day, seeing some of the talent going to the yeah. talent shows, yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, seeing yeah. the dancers, right. maybe say, you know what, I want to perform, right? And so if you could put a, a a rap with that dance, right, you're out of here, right, right. So that's why I was. What about you, gangster? Uh, me, uh, they saying dancing is a part of entertainment, right? So in the islands coming up, I used to break dance, pop, right, ah, ah, pop, pop, pop. Oh yeah, so. you still got a move too. <laughs> he got me one. He got me one night. He called me you know, one. Yeah, it's a break, pop, and stuff like that. So I want to say, around ten years old, come right. to talent shows. On Great. Up. So I've been in the game. I want to say so. That's beautiful, man. Yeah, man. You know, I used to dance too. You may not never believe that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to see that. I'm gonna hey, have to see a visual of that. Hey, you may not re- believe this, but I used to be a very it. slim person when I was younger. <laughs> no, you too. were. You were. And, and and I used to break dance, and that for me mm-hmm. was the beginning of my love of hip hop, man. And and mm-hmm. and to your points, to your points, mm-hmm. it was for us in the South in Atlanta, a that was the energy that we was feeling, the synergy that we that, that made us start liking hip hop, the dancing, you know, what I mean, that's just in us, the drum, the the, right. the beat, the you rhythm. Remember the, remember the big cardboard? You have to take your cardboard. You yeah, had, you had your box right yeah, here. Yeah, boombox. And you had your cardboard. We used to yeah. take it all. My mama cardboard, man. I'm trying to tell you. And a little tile off the floor. I think we ripped up a bathroom tile one time, put it outside. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Fresh there. fest. Remember fresh fest. The fresh fest. Oh, the Omni. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God, man! Yeah. LL Cool J, Run DMC, oh. Joski Love. Oh man! Boom, 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 boom. Man, I'm trying to tell you. Oh. So, where did you two guys meet, man? We actually met. Uh, I met Nino uh, in Decatur. Actually, well, I, we met off um, off a of Claremont from through a guy named Gunshot that we knew. It was right. a mutual friend from yeah, Tennessee. Right. Gunshot. Uh, when we first started rapping, mm-hmm. it wasn't just me and Nino. Right. Mm-hmm. It was about five of us. It okay, was, it I was, didn't know it that. It was me, Nino, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Gunshot, Ganja, Vex, and mm-hmm. Shorty. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so over the years, and that's why I tell I tell people this story all the time. They think that. Uh, Nino and I, we dropped a song going Monday, and then Tuesday, everybody knew who we were. Right. It wasn't like that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? We, we, it never we, is. It, it, absolutely. We grinded for years and years and years, mm-hmm. and over those years trying right. to come out, different people fell off mm-hmm. for different reasons. Yeah. Some people exactly. didn't believe. Exactly. Some people moved back home. Some yep. people went to the military. It happens. People, absolutely. And so, and so at the end of the day, it worked out the way it's supposed to work out because we were the lo- only two left standing. Right. And our chemistry was immaculate. But if you go back and listen to our first album, Draw the Line, yeah. that's the only album that we had everyone 
that in the ghetto mafia clique. Right. Yep. Correct. Right. Correct. How about you? Oh, man. We, Nino. Everything he said was correct. You know, we met, you know what I'm saying, through Gunshot. Gunshot introduced me to Wick. Wick right. was already in doing his thing right. And I ain't, right. I ain't never rocked a day in my life. You know what I'm saying? We hooked up. He said, man, I'm, I want to put a group together. And he was like, man, you know how to rap? I was like, nah, I can't rap. <laughs> I do, but, but I you do know, a little reggae. You were I, do, I was doing a reggae. And see, here's you know the thing. Saying, you know what? I can feel it off of you. Reggae, reggae. Reggae. You, you have been a reggae. You need, you need, from he, uh, I want you to press him on this. <laughs> right, right, right. I've been right. trying to get him to do that ever since. When I first met Nino, right. Nino had the island, you know, the shirts, what I they love, been wearing. I love my accent, though. And he could, he could chant, you know. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. 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 That's, and that's, so that's why I said when I first heard him, because my partner said, hey, I yeah. got this guy named Nino. <laughs> right, and right. he can do reggae. Right. We need to put him on a record. Yeah. So when Nino Why came. Why not? Was, yeah, he won't do it no more. Now he, I can't now he, do now, it. Now, I've, I've been up here too long. I lost my accent. <laughs> you know what's so crazy, man? When I first met you years mm-hmm. ago, mm-hmm. I felt like you had the Caribbean vibe on yeah. you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. you have that energy coming off of you, so mm-hmm. it would not be a far fetch to for you to do that, and that'd be that'd be kind of that'd be kind of outstanding. Absolutely, yeah. and yeah. it's a part of our sound on the first album that we did. If you go back and listen to that first yeah. album, Draw the Line, yeah, 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 a yeah. lot of people that was the flavor that he was bringing, yeah. right. on that album. Right, actually, Bone guys used to be like, "Man, how you do that?" Right, right. I used to say, I, I'm from the islands. He was like, man, he's from the Cato, man. How you do that? How you change your voice? How you, how you right. sound yeah. like that? Right, right. You just think I'm lying. So, so that's why all the wicked come yeah. in and the come again yeah. and all the ad libs and stuff. Right. Because that's what that's what he was. That's what he brought to the group. Wow. From the right. islands, but mm-hmm. you know, I can't get I can't get him. Do what that part no of the more. Caribbean you from? Uh, St. Croix, Virgin Islands. St. Yes, Croix. U.S. Virgin Islands. You heard about St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John. Wow, Those yeah. Those are the three, three U.S. Virgin Islands. I'm from St. Croix. Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah man. Since we're, since, since we're on the subject of the first album, it's 1994, and y'all are from Decatur. Well, yeah. St. Croix. Yeah. And what was the synergy and vibe behind writing a song like Life of a Sniper from the first album, Draw the Line? Were yeah. you influenced uh, um, by any of the great ones? N.W.A. Public we, Enemy. We were a, a lot of great ones. I ain't gonna get into every single name, but a, absolutely them. Ghetto yeah. Boys. A Ghetto lot of great Boys. Yeah. East and West Coast. Because I just talked to Scarface last Scarface. night. Scarface. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. But but on that on that Sounds album like right there, it was kind of what we were going through at the time. Nino Nino mm-hmm. and I, we were uh, after everybody kind of left. It had got to a point where we were. We was pretty we much was homeless. We in the trap, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And in the and in the, in the trap. And yes. all we thought about, yes. right. I'm glad we made it past this. Yeah, was robbing folks. Right, right. You know, and and yeah. and so that's kind of what we were talking about in that song, right. "Life of a Sniper." Is like right. you know, like because right. we were always watching someone. Right, you right, know, right, uh, right. Watching the nigga with the dope boy. With yeah. so watching <laughs> right, this person right, right there. Like right. kind of what a sniper does. A sniper is always not really close, hands on. Yeah, he's always yeah. Sort of at a distance. Yeah, and watching. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of what we were, what we were yeah. we were doing back then. Now, luckily, uh, we never got caught in anything, got killed or killed anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. But that's kind of where our mentality was. Blessings. You know what I mean? We were executing everything. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just young and dumb and just and trying to survive. That's why I can understand a lot of the young guys now. Uh, I tell people this, and I'm going to pass it on Nino. Uh, when I see something on the news, mm-hmm. I see – a uh, 17, 18 year old, they, they don't ran up in a in a jewelry store or something. Everybody our age was outraged. Oh, yeah. how, they're dumb. How they forgot. They, do they this? forgot they, they were young they, too. They, they forgot. And I said, I said, well, you got to think back to when you were 17, 18, and your parents put you out on the streets because right. that's what we do as as black people. I can't wait till you get 18 to get you get you up out of my house. That's right, how, right. That's a that's a, a another form of uh, oppression that we go through. Right, right, right. Uh, and we hear that all the way coming up. Right. So when you put out these kids, when you put these young boys out at 17 and 18 years old and they're immature, mm-hmm. some kids need to stay home to their 30. Right. Some need to stay home mm-hmm. to their 25. Right. Each child, you have four boys, each one need to go at a different time. People don't understand that. Right. What makes 18 the limit? Right. So you throw, right. you throw a kid out there at 18 and he's immature right. with no money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? What, maybe with no education besides the diploma that he has, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it'd be easy to run up in a jewelry store when you see some bling. That's real. No, but they don't think about that. Right, you know, right, you think right. about how you are now at 40 and 50. And, right, you know right, what I'm saying right, now. right. So, you know, Life of a Sniper, man, we were living that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and luckily, we got out of it because right. a lot of people don't make it. That's very true. It's very true. Facts, facts. Yeah, the art, the art, the art reflects the lifestyle that we was living. We, mm-hmm. was, we was on the street. You know what I'm saying? We 
got enough money to, you got a 50 slab, <laughs> break it down. Right. Start in the trap. Right. You know what I'm saying? Walk up to some traps. We didn't even know. No one in the trap. We just walk up there and start busting it down. Me and Wick. You know right, what I'm saying? Real, right. real, real, real talk. You know what I mean? We really lived it. Hey, if it weren't for if it weren't for a lot of older people praying for us, then we yeah. wouldn't be here right here doing the interview with you right now. So well, that's you know blessings. What I'm yeah, mm-hmm. that's blessings. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people before us, a lot of great people around us that that saw a vision in us ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, is why we're here today. Yeah. But that, that's usually the case, man. Like people. People usually see something greater in mm-hmm. you more than you see it in you because you're in the bubble. Right. They outside looking in. They can say, hey, man, you know, if you move this way, this way, this way, then you could do this. You're like, man, I don't even see that. Well, let me show you. Absolutely. And let me show you the direction of the way you can go and then we can move forward from there. Mm-hmm. And usually most people, if they got their head on their shoulders just a little bit, they think right. first. Right. Then they react. Then they act. Mm-hmm. And you guys did that, right. and it's a blessing. We really appreciate the fact that whoever told you that mm-hmm. was uh, did it because without you, your sound, we would have been lost in this type of energy that we're in now in Atlanta because Ghetto Mafia to me was uh, like the Hard Boys. Our first real introduction mm-hmm. to what street rap was and what was the sound that we can kind of look up to. Everybody want to look up to something, right? Mm, absolutely. You want to emulate something great, and you guys were that for us. Right. Appreciate that. Yeah, man. That's it's a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The sound of the and energy of the trap is made commercial in one of my favorite songs of all time. Indicator. Mm, straight from the deck, Jack. Straight from the deck. I, I guess the biggest, wrong. The biggest song in the world. <laughs> right. What space were y'all in? What space were y'all in when y'all made that monster? Man? That that was that was um, man. It it came about to me. I was trying to figure out something different right. uh, that nobody else was doing because at that time, now you have to realize you have. Like greats like Raheem, Raheem right. out. You got the, you know, you got the South. You just hit right. uh, Dead Kizzy. Right. You got that bass sound kind of going on. Yeah, yeah, Miami yeah. had that going on also. Right. But then in New York, you had everybody was lyrical. Right. And I, I me personally, uh, and Nino already told you he wasn't rapping then. Uh, <laughs> before I answer that, I went down to Eric Sermon Studio one time. Okay. Uh, and this he is does. what this is what this is what let me know I had to do something like Straight from the Dead. Right. I'm down there rapping. Mm-hmm. Uh, MC Breed, a rapper uh, who died, Breed. he sent me and Nino down there. We were yeah. the last one standing. Rest easy, So Breed. we rapped for Red Man, Method Man, and Every Sermon. So, so they Breed loved Nino. <laughs> so because Nino had right. the island thing. Yeah, they had yeah, already yeah. done a song together and everything. I was the yeah. problem because I had a southern draw. Right. And and a heavy tongue. So so they didn't really understand what to do. They knew perfectly what to do with Nino because, hey, we can put him on some chance. Right. You feel me? Right. So we down there rapping and stuff and I look up, Eric Sermon had done left, and Method Man had done walked out, and it was just down to Red Man. Red Man stayed and smoked with it. You like, well, I, I dig in what y'all kind of doing, man. But at that point right now, I said, you know what? I you know, I can't be trying to sound like I'm from New York, trying to battle styles with KRS One. Right. And it, because there's a lot of my s- songs that I was writing at the time, yeah. I was trying to be lyrical. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't embracing my tongue. Right, right. right I hadn't right, found right. myself yet. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, Straight from the deck was more like, you know what? I ain't finna be up here talking about I'm quote I'm, right. I'm finna make something that's just natural, that feels good to me. I don't have to say a lot. I can say one word and I can get these words out fast as I want to. Right. Smoke one, drink one, drink one. And, mm. and that's what I and that's what I did. And we and you know, me and Nino vibed on it, came right. up with the track, track for it, man. And 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 one thing about I can say about this man here. Is anything, and this is, and you were talking about with with with, with a good relationship. Indeed, remember you said friendship first, right? Exactly. But another thing I'm gonna add to that, okay, is, a, is is your partner being receptive. Indeed, and and and. Out of all the people that was in the group at first, if yeah. I would have said that, they wouldn't have understood it. Of course. Anything that I would say, he would get it. Right. So therefore, if I start mm-hmm. smoke good, drink good, everybody else looking crazy, but Nino be like, well, drink one. <laughs> so, we, so we there. Yeah. Right, you right. You see what I'm saying? Right. So once yeah. I drop it, he can go right there with me. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? He feeling exactly what I said. Man, right. I used to come in and I have a rap. I say, Nino. It, it be, it be, uh, I call him the night before. You know, I got this song, man, I want you to hear. Man, I'm going to hear it. I'm going to hear it. He don't come over all day. We got studio the next day. It be five <laughs> minutes before we got to go in the booth. Right. I get that thing to Nino. I said, Nino, whoop, whoop, whoop. 
You know, look at that thing one time. I got it. But you know where that comes from? Because, shit, we've been together all our life. Yeah. Right. We live together. Yeah. Everything he was doing, I would do anything I was doing, he was doing. Right. Yeah. So it's like, you know what I mean? It just came together. Yeah, it's it like, took him but one second. He'd yeah. look at that thing and be like, yeah, okay, li- I see what you're trying. I see was, what you're doing. We're living the same life. That's real. So That's family. Yeah. Brothers. Yeah. Right. And so I love the genius, and I got to call this the waltz and trap flow, the cadence sound of Ghetto Mafia. Very timeless, indeed. Who came up with that approach? And was it both of you, right? Y'all both came with that we sound, did, we did, that we flavor. Did. We 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 both came with it. Like I said, one works with, one works with the other. Uh, right. I, you know, I'm not gonna ever sit here and say that 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 it's all wig, and you know what I'm saying. Because like I say, Nino brought a lot of stuff to me, showed me a lot of stuff, and. Like I said, he was very receptive to things that I was doing. Plus, I saw a lot of stuff in him that he was an instrument to me. I couldn't do certain things. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what? I said, you know, I, I would write stuff in the mind saying, you know, I'm going to sit because of Nino. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, and vice right. versa. You know what I'm saying? Like, he would call me in the studio sometimes. Mm-hmm. Hey, Wick, I need you to say this word for me. Mm-hmm. I can't get it out. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because some words used to be hard for Nino right. to say right. that we take for granted. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? So from the he, Caribbean. Absolutely. <laughs> right. So then he would say, hey, Wick, I need you to say this right here. You know what I'm saying? Right. Leave right. the space right. open for me. Right. So we had to learn to kind of work together on every single thing. He yeah. would utilize some of my skills. Right. I would utilize some of his skills. You, you know what's so crazy? It's, 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 it's genius. And I, I said that earlier and I mean that because the fact that you may have not known this or you knew this, I don't know, that that is one of the most sought after rhythms. Yeah. That is a timeless groove that is eternal going way back to the beginning of, 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 of time, right? Mm-hmm. And the fact that you guys got onto that and made it where it was just attainable for people in this world to be able to vibe on it. It's just, it's crazy. I was just talking to Kizzy about it, right? Mm -hmm. And it was like, yo, man, you don't know, but you know. Right. That's the that's the that's the key to being an artist. Right. That's when you know it's really this where you're supposed to be. Right. When you're doing something that's great and you don't know you're doing it. Right. Right. You know right. how when you get on stage and you perform, mm-hmm. if you ever start thinking, it's the problem. It's a problem. Yeah. You, so as soon as you start right. looking at the crowd and start right. thinking, right. Uh, it's over. It. It's over. It. Absolutely. Show's done. Because <laughs> you project that energy. Right. Yeah, they can see you thinking. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. They can see you thinking. Yeah. So it's 2005. One of my favorite songs from the East Side is on the on, on the old, on the Hustle album, right? It's called uh, "On the Hustle" from the album uh, "The Return, Return to Get Ghetto Mafia." Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Return to Ghetto Mafia. What was the vibe like creating that energy on that the, on on my hustle? On my hustle, on my hustle. What's the vibe? Who was? We, was we, wanted to, we was looking for a club yeah. song. We yeah. didn't have no club song. Yeah. Everything right. we was doing was just banging street. You right. know what I'm saying? So right. we tried to come up with something, drinking a smoking party song. Right. So On My Hustle was that. It was that On My Hustle. Oh, so, yeah. Who that? Boom. Donna Ross? Boom. Yeah, man. Come yeah. on, man. Donna yeah. Ross. On My Hustle. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Where? I, what, was I on that record? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you on the record. <laughs> I, I, it was so many on that we did that didn't come out, and some that did come out. I can't remember which ones came out, which ones, oh. which ones did or didn't come yeah, out. All my hustle was was a, was a big. A lot of yeah. people like that song. Absolutely, yeah. yeah we, that I was, was a big that record. Song. I love that record. Oh bro. yeah, I'm on that record. Well, I'm on it then. Man, you so foolish. <laughs> fix it, mix it, slam it. Yeah. Right. You don't remember that song? He, he don't remember his verse. You don't remember none of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was on that one. Talking about yeah. just being in the moment. Don't yeah. even remember. I snap on that too. I can't remember, but I remember, I remember yeah, that song Yeah, I remember too. that. Well, I was yeah. on there. I was ready. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. Hey, <laughs> did you ever I think? Did, the same <laughs> did you ever think that the Ghetto Mafia would be one of the most influential sounds from Atlanta? What do you hope to see from the industry once you guys decide that you don't want to do it anymore? Pass the, you know, pass the baton on. Right. What would you like to see? Well, um, 
First of all, I'm not going to ever stop doing it until I until I until I die. I'm trying to break Correct. that. St- I'm trying to break that right. stereotype perfect, up. Perfect that there, answer. That, right. that there's a, a age limit on right now. There is no age limit. A, absolutely. So so that's one thing. But and and I feel like we've already passed the baton. We passed right. the baton after a few albums. After that's our right. sound got out, so it's already yeah. been passed. Now what I would like to see is. Uh, not just me, but you know the new generation, the generation right. after mm-hmm. that. Uh, go back and check out all of us. Right. Uh, see what we all have done. What mm-hmm. I tell, what I when, when people sometimes they be thinking that you know we bitching man, we we saying this, we saying that. I say, look, I ain't, I don't, I don't need now dollar from now artists that's out. I ain't never asking niggas ain't nothing. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. All mm-hmm. I ask is for the homage. Yeah. Period. Right. And and I feel like that if you are a rapper, right. If you went to Michigan State, right. If you played at Miami, right. You should know the people that came before you. You That's should real. not be on my basketball team and you play at, at Michigan State and not know who Glenn Rice is. Right. I don't care if you're young right now today. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Correct. So that that's that or Andre Rising. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that's that's my thing. You should not be from Atlanta, Georgia, and doing no trap music, and mm-hmm. somebody asks you who Nino and Wicked is, and you don't know. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, so so th- that is just a homage of it. Right. Uh, you you know, do your homework, young people. We gotta teach them our homework. They gotta be receptive. Right. And and that's good enough for me, bro. I don't need a dime from you. That's real. That's real. I feel the same way, man. I think that we we as a people, as an industry, we have to learn how to treat those before us as greats mm-hmm. um, lineage, if you will. The lineage of the, the sound needs to be completely thought out and people need to respect things more. Absolutely. Folks need to, they need to show more homage as like, for me, like when they ask me a question like, man, who you like that came out back in the day? I, I said it right away. Right. Scarface. The- right. Right. NWA. Right. Rakim's. Right. You ask them if you ask, ask them what they say. They, I, you know, they like, uh, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Start, basically, they attitude the rap started with me. Right, what do you mean? Right, Who right. did I like? Right, 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 right. right. Did there right. was somebody before me? Right, 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 right. right. Really? Exactly. <laughs> and that's I'm the I, one who created the kick drum and the snare. Absolutely. That's my only concern about the homage part of it. I feel. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, we get into the section of seven, right? Mm. Can you guys name, individually, name seven songs that no one would know that you're listening to. Nemo. That I'm listening to and that he's listening yeah, to yeah. or to on, collectively. Uh, yeah. On, on our album or any, period, any music. Period. Any song that any seven songs that someone would not know that Nino's listening to right now in his playlist. Uh, ah, that's a hard, that's a tough one right now. I have a lot of them. Seven I listen songs. to Wonderful World. Wonderful World? Uh-huh. By who? Um the one, the black guy with the big old thing. What his name? Uh, <laughs> my guy, Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong. Right. I love the video and everything. Right. Um, I'm gonna tell you. Uh, I listen to Cindy Lauper. I'm a very big Cindy Lauper fan. <laughs> Ain't no wrong with Cindy Lauper. Yeah, I love no Cindy Lauper. What song by Cindy Lauper? Uh, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got it. I got it. Whatever that was. Right. 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 Uh. Time after time, is that what it is? Time after time. Uh, I'm gonna tell you, uh, Club Nouveau. Okay. Uh, I like. Uh, what song by Club Nouveau? Uh, what's they? Uh, Club Nouveau. Was that the one? Was that Don't Disturb This Groove? Is that, no, is that that's, them? No, that's that's that's. Uh, 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 well, I love that song. Mm-hmm. When they did pull up in the little the Cadillac, system. the little vert. That's the system. system. I got it wrong. Yeah, the system. Okay, the system. Right. I listen to that all the time. I listen mm-hmm. to. Uh, um, uh, Babyface, the deal, the deal. I can't, I can't remember all their names as fast, but they just have the uh, two occasions, right? Two occasions, uh-huh. that's right. And uh, my last one, I would say that I'm a huge fan because a lot of them, a huge fan. I'm Lionel Richie. Which Lionel I, Richie? Right? <laughs> the old school Lionel Richie, Commodores, <laughs> Commodores. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, one more, Jeffrey Osborne, and you, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, Jeffrey, come on now. We gonna know the way. Uh, come on now. I, hey, I love it. All right, I love it. Yeah, Nino. Me? Ah, oh, man. I like Guy. I like. I like Aaron Hall. Yeah, Aaron <laughs> Hall. I like. Right. Uh, <laughs> I like uh, Barry White. Oh wait a minute. Hold on. How does mm-hmm. Guy do it again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, damn. <laughs> oh, uh, who else? Uh, I like Barry White. Barry White. Yeah. I'm a big yeah. fan of Barry White too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, but a lot of songs I hear is when they play old school music on the radio and I, 
I sing along, but I don't yeah. got a lot personally that I listen to my collection. Right. Yeah. But I do like any, any reggae? Uh I like I like the dance hall stuff. The dance stuff that hall. Here, the, Which the, dance the hall? Bad is? boy this the uh Elephant Man. Elephant Man, Lieutenant Stitchy. Yeah. And, the, and them, them guys, you know what right. I mean? Bounty Killer. Bounty Killer. Yeah. Indeed. Those guys, those Indeed. Guys. Man, I love Caribbean music, man. Mm. Yeah. Love you it. want to turn me on to it. Yeah. That's real. Yeah. So we get to the seven second portion of our little segment here. Number one, what's the hardest part about being an artist? Um, Have to reinvent yourself every single time. All right. Yeah. Number two, the microwave or the oven at 350 degrees? 350. 350. Which one would I put my food in? Yeah. <laughs> microwave. Okay. Yeah. I go ahead and be done with it. I put it in. I put it all depends on what it, you put in there. Yeah. yeah. If it's a big chicken, oh, if it's yeah, a chicken, yeah, yeah. I put it in the oven. Yeah, I hope you wouldn't put a chicken in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> not a whole chicken. Three, Some people have done minutes, that, though. Yeah, it, it don't taste good. Cooked, it doesn't, it's not, no, it don't taste good, sir. I, I no, sir. No, sir. <laughs> Number three, a bottom-up, a long tee, or a, a button-up, I'm sorry. A button-up, a long tee, or a classic polo. Nino. Polo. Polo. Wicked. A nice button up. Button up. Why not? Cufflinks. What's the one item you need in the studio when you're recording? Wicked. Water. Blunt. Blunts. Number six. <laughs> <laughs> Blunts or papers? No, oh, Mr. Uh, Blunts. Mr. Needle. Blunts. I smoke papers. Papers. If I, if I do smoke, I do smoke papers. Papers. Yeah. Number seven. Name an item that you'll never remove from your wallet. Wicked. Uh, from my wallet. Yeah. Never remove it. My social security card. Deed. My ID. You know. All right, guys. We had a good time. Family and friends here. My brothers. Yes. yes. Nino and Wicked. Yes. Wicked! Bro brothers from another mother. <laughs> yes. Wicked told me not to do that, but I, I still, have to. I still got I'm to a see fan. you dance. I'm a fan. So. I still got to see you dance. I, you I gonna do me? See me do the wave? It, it's, not, it's not the size at all. I, it's it the, ain't the it's, size. No, it's not that. It's just, I, you kind of seem stiff. Stiff? Yeah. I Why don't you don't seem stiff? You know, you, Nino just showed you when he popped. He showed you. I said, oh, Nino can pop. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like me, look at that. You see that? What you can tell I had a move. What kind of move is that? The, 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 the limbleness. The, how, you know, how, how do you assume that I seem stiff? I don't see the... Have you not seen me perform before? <laughs> <laughs> how do I seem stiff? I, I, don't, I mean, you're like this. You're just talking. I just see your eyes moving. I don't see I don't, I don't see the juice. The juice? Yeah. What kind of juice you need? I mean, can you... can you? I mean, how? I got to see some video. Man, yeah. his video had to be the hardest video that came out back then. Man. He was going, <laughs> boom, walking through it. He was just walking, though. Boom, I didn't see him stage. You never see me on stage? I didn't see, I didn't see crushing him smirk. Crushing the whole city, man. I didn't see, I didn't see him smirk. Yeah. Crushing the city, man. Man, I was a yeek like everybody else. I didn't see a yeek. He flicked the highway. I sure did. <laughs> Talk to him, Nino. Talk to him. I'm going to tell you something. Man, come on, I've man. been dancing since I can remember, bro. bro. I started out dancing. You did, bro. You I did. swear to God. I'm just messing with you, my brother. It's all good. You got to mess like with me. I'd like to get you, get you hyped up a little bit. Oh, yeah, let me tell you something. Let like to, like to get you going. Sometimes. Hey, you know, you know, I've been knowing, Nino, I've been knowing <laughs> both of you for a while, but I've been knowing this, this guy <laughs> here <laughs> for a very long time. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, we've always had great conversations, man. Right, absolutely. And Wicked has always been a genuine brother, man. Right. I just appreciate both of you for coming out absolutely. and and sharing your story, your origin of who you are and where you come from and right. the East Side. Which school y'all went to? Columbia or South? South uh, me, South me, Columbia. I went to Stone Mountain. I went to a yeah. lot of different schools. Yeah. I was kind of bouncing around at right. a young age. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. I love the Cater, man. But uh, Cater is greater. Shout out to the Cater, man. Yeah. Wick homeschooling, man. I went to tra school track. <laughs> school <laughs> track. Yeah. Trap high. Wick, Wick, Trap high. Show me the ropes. <laughs> Trap high yeah, in America. <laughs> <laughs> we up out of here, y'all. Hey. Thank you. Hey. It's another segment of yeah, seven man. questions in seven seconds. Yes. I am Storyteller, one half of Crusher Consulting. 
sitting here with Ghetto Mafia, Absolutely. my boy Nino and Wicked. Now. Now. Yes. Um, I want to know, what was your experience like sitting down with Bone, someone who knows you, um, that knows the other side of the story, uh, right. being able to have that those old experiences and reminisce on those old times um, from the beginning and help complete this origin story? Yeah. Uh, well, for me... Um like like he kind of said in the in the interview, uh, we always have great conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I maybe talk to Bone once or twice a a month anyway, and more on social media. Uh, personally, once or twice, but uh, pretty much every day, some type of interaction with him. So sitting down with him for me is just pretty much just like talking to one of the homies, one of the family members. Yes, you know, uh, I call him here and there uh, for for advice on stuff. Uh, if I'm unsure of something or just to talk. So to me, it's just, you know, just sitting down with one of the fellas. Nino? Well, me, I met Bone later on, and uh, I was just customer seeing him on TV. It was like, mm-hmm. I was, it was like, you know, I looked at this guy, like that song, Never Scared, was one of my favorite songs that came out. Yeah. Absolutely. It was one of, you know, I like that artist. I like the way that guy, that size, jump around the stage like that. That was incredible, <laughs> man. Absolutely. So, so yeah, it was, it was pleasure for me yeah you all have done a lot of interviews i mean your tenure in the business is extensive um is there any part of your story that you were never able to tell until today uh yeah for 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 me kind of um about the rest of the group ghetto mafia Mm -hmm. uh a lot of people didn't know they always thought that from the beginning it was just nino and i yeah i didn't know that either yeah Yeah. and 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 i tell people we were one of the one of the first groups that had a female in the group wow Uh, her name was ganja Ganja. if you go back and listen to nice what's that uh organized crime crime. yeah Mm -hmm. she's on that record Mm -hmm. uh so a lot of people didn't know that uh and that's something i was able to I, i just assumed people knew that so it was good to be able to say that today to bone crusher Yeah, I think that's what people are going to get from watching these. Like, I didn't know that. And I've been around you guys for years. And we've performed at different places. And, you know, you Mm -hmm. guys have always blessed us whenever we've called you when we were, you know, performing or Mm -hmm. opening up or whatever Mm -hmm. it was. Mm -hmm. But what do you want people to get from watching your segment on seven questions in seven seconds? Oh, that we, you know, a lot of people think that that, uh, Nino and I, that that we just— Stone Cold Killers. You know, we have no personality. <laughs> no that, way. They can't it talk to us. Yeah, yeah that we, was... we're not fathers. Mm. That we don't have a sense of humor. That uh, mm. they listen to our music, and when they see me out, they just like like I can tell if I'm if I'm out, and people they notice us, but they scared to come up to us. They think mm. we're not approachable. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They don't think we're as smart as we are. Mm. You know, so it shocks people a lot of times when they when they do talk to us and say, you know what? Yeah, they rap about dope guns and this and that and a lot, lot of, but they're very intelligent. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Nino has his own business uh, wow. that's doing very well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we. we you know, I, I I want people to understand that we we just like y'all, man. It's just it's entertainment. When mm-hmm. we go home, we turn off the lights just like everybody mm-hmm. else, man. We take our problems down just like everybody. Else. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for you? Ah, uh, man, the same. Yeah, what do you see? Pretty much cover everything. I think it's because we wasn't put out there on a commercial platter, so people, you know, by listening to our music, they just thought we were just stone cold killers. They yeah. Know, they don't know how to open up to us. You yeah. Know what I mean, they just yeah. hold back. They hold back type of thing. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be awesome for people, not only people from Atlanta Mm -hmm. uh, that that have watched the culture and Mm -hmm. the music business over the years, but Mm -hmm. I think people from all over the world that Mm -hmm. just didn't have that opportunity to see. And and the origin story providing this opportunity for you all to be able to share it Mm -hmm. is is just as important. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I want to know from the interview, what was your favorite segment? Was it was it the seven questions? I liked I liked the seven, but you know what? The what whole is, interview was great. Okay. Like I told you, uh, Bone is an excellent interviewer in a way. So me, when me and him are talking, mm-hmm. it's, 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 we could go on for days. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm order some wings or something here for me, man. <laughs> I can could, I could sit there and talk to the guy for days. So uh, the seven questions was interesting. Um, what about the seven songs? Because that was like a pop quiz, right? It's like it what? was. He yeah. thought he was gonna fool me. Uh-huh. He thought you was ready, was, though. I, I was ready. You was I'm, ready. I'm you was ready. ready. I ain't you never scared. Okay. I'm always okay. ready. I know, hey. but but yeah. Um, 
I did like that. I'm okay. glad you brought that up. Yeah. Okay. Nino, what the was whole, your favorite the whole, part? The whole, the whole interview was just off the chain to me. Yeah. You know what I mean, I don't think no part was better. Than, I liked all the questions you asked, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, I love the fact that I get to watch these firsthand because mm-hmm. I learn a lot. And just being able to watch how these interviews progress, it's like... Mm-hmm you'll start asking Bone questions. Like, mm. oh, yeah. hey, Bone, wh- what do you mean you used to dance? Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. You, you, you can't dance. I, you know, I it's just, like, I got to it's an even it. exchange. It's right. an even exchange. I have to see I got move. footage, Wiki. Come to the house. I got footage, okay? <laughs> I hope it ain't that, that Bigfoot footage where it be blurry. Uh, they behind uh, the, You put the little spotlight on it from a mile away. You know the Bigfoot And it's really blurry, somebody else. You know the Bigfoot, blurry, the, uh, Bigfoot footage is always blurry. You can't never just catch him flat out. You know, it's him, it's Bigfoot. And the moment, raw. Yes, always, he was up on a hill. Right. I love you. Yeah, I, I don't. I want right. to see the real crazy. deal footage. You're right. crazy. <laughs> well, it's a it's a pleasure, even knowing you guys, meeting yes. you guys, getting to know you guys. You know the brothership that you all have. Absolutely. Um, I I, I mean seriously, yeah. thank you for your tenure, and um, you guys are truly one of the you ATL got, you got, you got, but you got to do one thing for us before before you leave. What I got to do. We need a now. Oh, you know, if you, 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 you're too early. You didn't even wait. That's right. And I, I really. Get, and we got to get one out of Nino, too. We got to get a okay. out of Come Nino. Come on, come on, Nino. Boom, no, wrapped I, it up. Bro. See, Bone so hooked we y'all say, up. Bone so hooked y'all up. Y'all see, 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 Bone uh, uh, said it's Bone. We need a, we need a <laughs> wicked, no, and we need a now. Well, I want to say that I appreciate you guys both coming here today to be a part of this origin story with the ATL greats, the origin story of the ATL greats, a story that needs to be told. I think people are going to learn a lot from you two. I think they're going to feel a lot of your energy. And Nino, I still hear that accent. I'm just letting you know. It's still there. I'm telling you, the whole interview, I was like, I don't know what you're talking (laughs) about. (laughs) But it's those tones, that rhythm, it's still there. And I I I love hearing it. Exactly. It's still there. I lost my accent. Yes. Yes. It's still there, Nino. And so now, (laughs) I'm going to wrap up this post segment with with me, yeah. storyteller. Right. Thank you again for coming, and we, it was a pleasure having both of you. Appreciate it, storyteller. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Bone. 